Welcome guys, my name is Ryan and today we'll just go ahead and take a look at how to set up Home Assistant. We'll be going through the process of installing it and getting it started. So just the basics, just to set it up. My idea with this series is um, every single time I add a module to my Home Assistant, I'll go ahead and create a video. That way you can go ahead and follow along as I go through the process of setting up my home. So each of the components I've added, you'll have a video showing exactly the process of how to add it to your own home as well. So without anything else, let's go ahead and take a look. There we go. Okay, so what is Home Assistant? Home Assistant is basically a hub. So it has the ability to integrate all your smart devices. So maybe you already have like a Chromecast or some smart lights or you have a speaker or anything else that is smart that integrates and uses its own app, what Home Assistant will do is it'll have them all collected in a single place. So you'll have the option to control each of those items using a single application or single web browser um, and access that information through one interface instead of having to open each individual app. And you can also set up automations that way that you'll later be able to go ahead and automate some information in your house to make your life a little bit easier. With that said, let's go ahead and see what you would need to set up Home Assistant. So the first thing you're going to need is a Raspberry Pi. Now you can use a different setup, but in essence, mostly all of them are going to use a Raspberry Pi. For this one, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi 3. Um, you're also going to need an SD card, which I have right here. And I would recommend picking a fairly fast one. If you're buying it a new one, it'll probably be better. Um, as for the Raspberry Pi, you're probably only going to find fours by the time you see this video. So it'll be a Raspberry Pi 4, but a 3 and a 2, maybe not a 2. It should work, but I won't recommend using a Raspberry Pi 2. Then you'll also need a card reader enabled to, to in order to flash your um, home assistant to it, to the SD card. And then lastly, you'll need a software called Etcher, which is right here. You can just go ahead and download that. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead on Home, Assist home Assistant's page. All you need to do is you can just go ahead and click on Get Started or Getting Started. Once we're on here, you'll see we have Raspberry Pi Model B+. Plus. So it tells you on here exactly how to set this up as well. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we already have all this information right here. So all we need to do is we can just go ahead and download the file. So just click on download. It'll show us a list of all the files. Um, I'm looking for Raspberry Pi Model B, so I'm just going to use this one. I would recommend, as they also recommend using the 32-bit version, I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. And that'll go ahead and start to download the file. And then once that is downloaded, we can go ahead and go to Etcher. Um, I'll have all the links down in the description below as well. So you can just go ahead and click on it and download it from there. On here, all we need to do is we can just go ahead and click on download. I'm using Windows, so I can just go ahead and download that as well and set that up. So once we've downloaded all, all of the files, you can go ahead and plug in your SD card. Um, make sure you have everything plugged in and your computer is detecting your SD card. We can go ahead and open up Edge. And once that is open, you'll see Edge. It'll look something similar like this. Um, so the first thing it's going to ask us is to select the image. That's going to be the file that we downloaded. So we just go ahead image, which will bring up the browser. We can just go ahead to this specific file that we downloaded right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my downloads and select that specific file. Click on open and you'll see right there it shows us. And you can go ahead and select the specific SD card. Keep in mind this will format that SD card. So if you have any information on there, please make sure that you back it up or take it off because there's nothing going to be left on this SD card once we start the flashing process. We can just go ahead and hit flash and you'll see it'll go ahead and start adding that image on here. And then once that has been completed, as you can see, my editor is out of date. We'll just ignore that for now. Um, it'll show that 
that flash is complete. Now, before you use it or plug it into your Raspberry Pi, there is one thing that you could do if you are deciding if you want to use it um, with Wi-Fi, so you can connect it directly to your Wi-Fi network and you don't need to plug in a LAN cable into the Raspberry Pi and you can just use a normal power cable and that'll go ahead and power and connect to your Wi-Fi. You can set that up before plugging in the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. I'll show you how to do it right now. So what we do is we unplug the SD card first because it unmounted once it has been once it has completed the flash. We plug it back in. And once we plug it back in, you'll see it shows us right here. And we can just go ahead and open up the files or open up the SD card. And you'll see it shows us all the information that that's on this SD card. On here, if we take a look at the installation guide right here, if we go a bit down, it'll tell us that um, what we could do is we can go ahead and create a folder for config and network and then a text file with network. So. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So go ahead and create a new folder. Call it config. Open that up, create another new folder called network. And then in here, we can just go ahead and create a new text document. And we can call it my networks. So I'm just going to go ahead and rename this again to my dash network. There we go. And hit enter. And then once we have went ahead and created that folder, added in that, we can go ahead and back in the installation. Just go ahead and click on this how to right here which will show us some information in here. Uh, what we'll be using is the wireless, so we can just go ahead and highlight everything in here. We'll just go ahead and copy, go back to that text file, uh, or the config file, so we'll just go ahead and open it back up again. And then we paste it all right in here. Now in here, please just make sure that you go ahead and add in your SSID. And then once you have that in here, you also need to go ahead and add in your Wi-Fi network password. And then once you have all that information in, you can just go ahead and hit on file, click save. And there we go. So the last thing we need to do is get rid of the file extension. So as you can see, we can go ahead and right click and rename, but it doesn't allow us to remove the .txt extension. So in default, it's going to show that way in all Windows installations. So what you'll need to do is, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on view right here and just change that information on our uh, Windows Explorer itself. So in the options, we can go ahead and go here, click on view. And then right here is going to be an option that says hide extensions for known file types. Go ahead and uncheck that, click on apply, click OK. And right now you'll see it. once I click on rename, we have that extension highlighted. And we can just go ahead and delete that. Hit enter, it's going to tell us we're going to change the file type and just say yes. And that should be it. So now what we need to do is we can go ahead and unplug this. SD card, plug it into our Raspberry Pi, and then power it up. So we can go ahead and plug in the power and leave that for a couple of minutes. Um, we won't be able to access it yet, so just let it run for, uh, for a couple of minutes so it runs through the setup, updating the information. And then once, it ha once you give it about 10, 15 minutes, we can go ahead and go access Home Assistant. This still through your web browser. You can just go ahead and open up your web browser and then go to the following address. So it's going to be hasio.local. And remember to go ahead and add in the port. So it's going to be colon 8123. Hit enter 
and that'll take you to your home assistant as you can see mine is still setting up so we'll just give it a few more minutes and then once it has completed its setup it'll automatically refresh the page as well there we go as you can see mine took quite a while but it eventually got there thank you slow internet so once you get on here on this page all it's going to do is it's going to ask you to fill in your name your username and your password so i'm just quickly going to go ahead and fill it in here uh. and then you just go ahead and click on create account then it's going to ask you to give your home a name and select your time zone as well as your location and then also select your unit system. I'm just going to leave this at home and the location I'll set a bit later so I'm just going to go ahead and set next. And there we go that should be it so I'm just going to go ahead and click on finish and that's it. So now you've set up your home assistant it'll give you some information. Um, you can go ahead and view, <coughs> browse a bit. Um, that'll be it for this video and we'll go ahead and take a look a bit deeper into home assistant itself in the next one one last thing guys i wouldn't recommend using wi-fi to connect to your network i would recommend using a lan cable instead as it is going to be a bit more secure and reliable than using a wi-fi that can cause some problems later on and then I would also recommend getting a case for your Raspberry Pi just because you are running your home hub on it and you don't really want that, that thing to get damaged as it is quite fragile as well. I think that should be it guys and in the next video we'll just go over how to set up a few add-ons in Home Assistant itself and how to get something running. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.